Good evening, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Our top story is a news update today. Former AG bashes President Granger over GCAM chairman appointment. Fitter calls for the removal of the one-third tax threshold and persons earning over $180,000. Only 23 A-field supply squatters applied for lands. And in court, the father of 10 remanded for trafficking narcotics. To begin tonight's newscast, we tell you that the Federation of Independent Trade Unions of Guyana is calling for the removal of the one-third income tax threshold of those earning above $180,000 per month. This, along with the reversal of other decisions by the government, will ease the burden of the populace, the Federation contends. The Federation of Independent Trade Unions of Guyana will be joining with the private sector and business community to influence change. This follows concerns which points to issues where democracy have been trampled upon. As such, the union is calling on the administration to relook at its approach to governance. For a budget 2018, the Federation has put forward several proposals aimed at easing the burdens of workers' backs. FITHUG is calling for improvement in the income tax threshold, along with the removal of one-third income tax threshold of those earning above $180,000 per month. The Federation is also seeking improvements in the sums paid as old age pensions and public assistance while calling for the reintroduction of the electricity and water subsidies for pensioners. The group pointed out clearly that there will not be silence as they will not allow workers' rights to be trampled upon. The second move is to get together with the private sector commission and other persons who are thinking in the same direction with the hope that we can influence a change in Mr. Granger's thinking. The union lambasts the administration on a number of issues plaguing the economy. The pay rise in position in the public service, but in 2018, all industry and the recent appointment of the GCOM chairman were among the issues raised. It is my expectation that we will ensure that mechanisms be put in place so that persons can express their disappointment and they can be a change. Moreover, the union is expected to implement a mechanism for persons to express their disappointment. Minister of Public Security Kamar Dramjitan is calling on the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit ranks to secure more convictions. Minister Ramjitan also observed that too often persons are caught red-handed with narcotics to walk free due to the lack of adequate evidence presented in court. The inability to secure the sentences, the minister said, is not a reflection of innocence. Kanu officers are urged to be professional and not to fall prey to the lucrative lifestyle the smuggling of narcotics may portray. Ramjitan stated only through ethics and professionalism that they will become distinguished officers. According to the former Attorney General and Opposition Member of Parliament, Anna Nadla, President Granger's recent unilateral decision to appoint retired Justice James Patterson as the new GCAM chairman is not only unconstitutional, but as an act of distrust. It is against this backdrop that the People's Progressive Party filed an injunction in the High Court to annul the appointment. Nan Lal, during an exclusive interview with News Update, alleged that the president somersaulted on his initial statement regarding the selection of a chairman for the Guyana Elections Commission. Further, Nan Lal claims that President Granger, the leader of the opposition Bar Jagdio, and himself during an indoor meeting had agreed upon making a collective decision for the post of GCOM chairman if all names on the provided lists were deemed unsuitable. That agreement, Nan Lal lamented, was not followed by the president, and as such, it is the opposition's mission to ensure the appointment is made void by way of the injunction filed on Monday. However, in relation to the special committee to select a GCOM chairperson that the opposition and government had agreed to, if the third list was rejected, the president on the night of Justice Patterson's appointment made it clear that the Constitution does not provide for such a committee. Meanwhile, Nanlal alleges that Justice James Patterson is not as suitably qualified as he claims to be. The other ground that we are basing our application on is the fact that we believe 
that the chairman of GCOM, who has recently been appointed Mr. Justice James Patterson, is not qualified in accordance with the article to be so appointed. We are asking for an order rescinding the appointment and we are asking for an order directing the president to choose one of the names submitted to him by the leader of the opposition or for the court to give such directions as may be necessary in accordance with and to ensure compliance of Article 161 of the Constitution. I have said this since uh, Sunday to the Stabrook News and they have published it Monday. Today is Tuesday. No one has proved me correct, incorrect. Newsroom, another news source, called the court system in Grenada and the court system told them that Mr. Patterson was not the Chief Justice of Grenada. And I am challenging Mr. Justice Patterson to produce his instrument of appointment. Judges are appointed by an instrument. If he was the Chief Justice of Grenada, let him produce the instrument appointing him Chief Justice of Grenada. The President should have asked for that. Any prudent President would have done that. Anyone can come and say that they were the Chief Justice of America. You just admit, you just accept that without verifying. While expressing the opposition's concerns on the matter, Nandal explained that the decision made by President Granger is only supported by himself and some of his close political advisers. This, Nandal Alex Pondit, should not be. The Guyana Bar Association, the Barbies Bar Association, the Guyana Human Rights Association, the WPA, a coalition partner, the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, the Private Sector Commission, the Barbies Chamber of Commerce, the Guyana Human Rights Association, FITOG, the largest labor movement in the country, have all come out and denounced and condemned this decision as unlawful, as undemocratic, as void, as politically senseless, as dangerous and inimical to this country. I am saying to you that there is nothing good that anyone said about this decision other than the government itself. Nanla stressed, with the injunction into the revocation of the appointed GCOM chairman, the opposition is optimistic that the court proceedings on the matter will begin on November 16. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. President David Granger's decision to unilaterally appoint retired Justice James Patterson as the next chairman of GCOM has been defended by Attorney General Basil Williams. Nickel Jonu has more. Attorney General Basil Williams has provided clarification subsequent to the appointment of a chairman of GCOM by President David Granger. Minister Williams says President Granger took into account the ruling made by the Acting Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire following the case of Marcel Gaskin versus the Attorney General. He noted that President Granger considered the provisions of Article 1612 of the Constitution which gives him the discretion to appoint a chairman of GCOM from the final list submitted by opposition leader Bar Jagdio. The Attorney General added that the third list was unacceptable to the President. The Chief Justice ruling stated that if the President considers that one or more persons on the list is not a fit and proper person, therefore unacceptable, then he may decide to reject the entire list as being incomplete or restrictive. The ruling added that the head of state may decide to choose one of the persons if they qualify even though every other name on the list is not acceptable. Therefore, the whole list needs to be rejected. However, Minister Williams noted that President Granger found the entire list to be unacceptable. 
on the issue of giving the opposition leader an explanation for the rejection of the list of nominees. The Attorney General noted that President Granger did give Jagdeo a criteria that would make a person on the list acceptable to him. Minister Williams Ford added that the candidate for the post should have wide knowledge of electoral matters, not someone who would allow any person to bulldoze or influence them to compromise their neutrality. The Attorney General added that the list of persons did not meet the criteria set out by President Granger, who resorted to Article 161.2, which permits him to act independently to appoint a person of the judicial category. Retired Justice James Patterson was sworn in on Thursday, October 19, 2017, as the new chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission. Nikhil Jonder reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead, you do stay tuned. Eh eh, BB, is we going with so much Windex for clean windows? All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business, I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Live healthier. Cook with canola and vegetable oil from Costco and Sam's Club, America's largest wholesale distributors. Same nutrition value as Wesson Oil. Get a case of six bottles of six pint canola oil for only $9,000. Members Mark Olive Oil also available. Imported and distributed by Isaac Investments. Available in all DSL branches and leading supermarkets countrywide. Isaac Investments, located on the third floor of the Regent Multiplex Mall, Regent and Wellington Streets. Telephone number 231-0142 or 231-0143. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Here's the Wit News update. Welcome back. The Demer Harbour Bridge Corporation is continuing the second phase of the pontoon maintenance and replacement program. Due to this, the bridge will be closed to vehicular traffic on October 28 from 8 hours 30 to 15 hours. Yannis Abrams filed this report. The Demerara Harbour Bridge Corporation held a press conference at their office on the maintenance work planned. General Manager of the Corporation, Ralston Adams, stated the seven-hour closure on October 28 is to facilitate the second phase of the pontoon maintenance and replacement program on the western end of the bridge. This brings the last pontoon in the, under the retractor span that we set out to change over the last, I think, about a year and a half to two years now. So we've been, you've noticed, I think about two weeks ago, we've closed the bridge for about six hours and that entailed changing out one of the pontoons on the, um, the retractor span. So this is the last of the extra large pontoons on the retractor span. Adams reassured that on October 29, reconnection will begin and the first test will be done. 
He further hopes that by October 31, retraction exercise will begin. The reasons, the reason why the, the last time we document everything that we did, that did is to ensure that we use that to refine um, the process as we uh, execute this new phase of the work. So we have learned um, a lot from what we did the last time. Um, what we've learned is that um, we don't need to disconnect the um, the ropes from the hydraulic winches. In June 2017, the general manager had scheduled the second phase to be done in November, but due to water tide and weather, it was recommended to have it done in October. The first phase was deemed successful. It will be carried out at a price of $103 million. The Demerara Harbor Bridge advises that the bridge will be closed to marine traffic from October 26 to 30 and vehicular traffic on October 28 from 8 hours 30 to 15 hours. Reporting for MTV's News Update at Demerara Harbor Bridge, I am Yanis Abrams. As the Chilean government continues to support the public sector, this time 25 foreign affairs officers were training globalization and global governments. Find out more in this report. Through a bilateral agreement between the governments of Guyana and Chile, foreign affairs officers were exposed to training in globalization and global governments. Ambassador of Chile, Claudio Rojas Raquel, said it forms part of a pilot project seeking to expose the participants to an analysis of international events. So we, we will exchange experience and we will uh, intertwine in terms of the political strategy of Chile in the international arena and how that experience that Chile is having could help and assist Guyana in its own process. Following the training, an assessment will be done to foresee what building blocks can occur between the two nations. Ambassador Rojas Raquel said the funding was facilitated as an exchange of support between the two countries. He's hopeful the project can be institutionalized with the partnership the Chilean government has with Guyana. Chile collaborated with the government to strengthen the mining sector with a visit by a team of geologists from a Chilean technical agency. The Guyana National Road Safety Council has planned to continue to hold training sessions with minibus and hire car drivers on the need for safety. In recent weeks, eight persons have lost their lives following two separate road accidents. Here's more. National Coordinator of the Ghana National Road Safety Council, Ramona Durgen, during an exclusive interview said, the advocacy body is trying to have the bus parks regularize. Durgen said, the council has been working with drivers to provide training in several areas to benefit themselves in the long term, as well as the passengers. We have done um, a driver retraining study with the park, with the bus drivers in 2016 something we promised them to continue to work with them. But because of my personal issues that I had in July, where I lost my husband, and uh, we, I, I, we kind of slowed down on the work, we were not able to continue to, to work with the bus drivers to do the regularization of the park and help them to assist them in how we can upgrade the park and the bus system in each bus park. To have a more decent system and a more livable system in the, in, in, on, the, on the car parks. The national coordinator added that the situation at the bus parks is not controllable. However, they are going to continue to advocate to the Ghana police force to better manage those areas. Another area of concern is allowed music in public transportation. Durgin affirmed that it is another area the council will be targeting. Um, we recently had someone advised us and saying um, we should start, to ta start back targeting the loud music in buses. And um, it is a very good um, suggestion and because we have not been looking at it because we haven't been got getting complaints as such. Only on Sunday last, three persons lost their lives in an accident at Verdon Hope. According to reports, the driver of the motor car PPP 4014, who was heading towards Verdon Hoop Junction, lost control of the vehicle. The car slammed into a parked car and then collided with a lantern post before the vehicle came to a halt. Nikhil Jonder reporting for MTV News Abate. 
Coming up, FITEC believes sugar can be saved through political commitment and swearing of local government commissioners with damage control, says Nanla. So you're going to be a top executive. You're looking into possible careers. You're going to the university. Your parents are proud of your success. The journey begins here. Enroll your child now at the business school and let us help develop their knowledge and confidence to achieve their full potential. The Business School, educating tomorrow's leaders. This is Annie Bina. She's a clothing designer and she really enjoys her work. She also likes to hang out with her friends. However, a life-changing event is about to occur. The mosquito that bit Annie Bina is infected with a tiny worm that causes lymphatic filariasis, also known as filaria. But what is filaria? Filaria is a disease that affects a person's lymphatic system, causing some body parts such as their feet or breasts to swell and eventually remain in a swollen state that cannot go back to normal. Filaria shows no symptoms during the early years. Untreatable chronic symptoms can appear sometimes as late as 20 years after infection. Since there are no symptoms in the beginning, most infected persons do not know they're infected, like Anibina. When the symptoms begin to appear, it will be too late. Nothing will be able to make them disappear. Have you been bitten by a mosquito that transmits filaria? Are you sure that you've not been infected like Anibina? What can you do then, since you see no symptoms? Prevention is the best cure. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. Try the new basil seed drink, enriched with basil seeds, which is proven to be good in the fight against colds, digestion, stress, weight loss, skin infections, and more. Basil seed drink, imported and distributed by Airwahab Trading and available nationwide. Political commitment. However, the government is firm on its stance on closing three more sugar estates come December. Here's more. Is aware of a number of implementable initiatives which can be pursued that will play a meaningful role in safeguarding the sugar industry. This is according to President of the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union, Kumal Chan. According to him, the refining of sugar and the co-generation plans are among the many measures that can boast revenues for the Guyana Sugar Corporation. A crude $9.5 billion in the sale of electricity to the national grid. And we suggested that you could have other cogen plants or system set up at Albion, Blaymont, East Dem, and Iflot. That is only one to point out, especially at this time when we are not going along with the Amila Falls and we are. Um, we are, we, are, we are plagued with blackouts, and this will be for some time to come. The union maintains its disagreement with the sugar company's plan, as they contend it will be the cause of severe hardship in society. Um, we examined the fields, and they would not produce 150. And it could be much less than 150. Our initial um, estimate is less than 150, even if it is 150. And already they are setting the blame on the workers and the union. That the workers and the union are engaging in strike actions 
and that will affect the production. But they're trying to scapegoat the union and the workers as to why the production will be so low this year. Meanwhile, Gaisuku has cited its implementation of an alternative livelihood program for those workers that will be out of employment come December. Over 90 workers have expressed their interest in the skills training program. The Rose Hall, Skeldaman and More Sugar Estates are expected to be permanently closed in December as the sugar company continues to operate at a loss. This means the three estates alone will remain in operation, Eiffel, Albion and Blairmont. Gaisuku hopes to continue with about 10,000 workers and $13 billion annually as a projected target for the three estates. People's Progressive Party Member of Parliament, Anil Nandla, is expressing doubt and claims defectiveness in the appointment of one of the newly sworn in commissioners of the Local Government Commission. Along with that, Nandla claims that the appointment of the eight commissioners of the Local Government Commission only came about as a way of political damage control as regard the manner in which the administration dealt with the GCOM issue. Here's more from Lashana Gopes Cornelius. President David Granger on Monday last had finally sworn in eight new commissioners to serve on the Local Government Commission, an appointment both the opposition and government had steadily been pushing for. However, the opposition member of parliament, Anil Nanlal, said there are still some defects regarding one of the appointed commissioners that needs to be addressed. The appointments have been made and we welcome that. We hope that the commission will begin to work because it has an important supervisory and checks and balance role to play among the local government organs of the country. And it has some very, very important responsibilities to discharge legally. But even that, those appointments, at least one of them, is defective and unlawful in my view. If you read the Local Government Commission Act, it, it stipulates how these people are to be appointed. A certain number of persons are to be appointed by the president and chosen by the president in exercising his own deliberate judgment. A certain number must come from the opposition, one must come from the parliament, and one must come from the local democratic organs. The one that should come from the local democratic organ. However, according to the Municipal and District Councils Act 2801, Section 98, the members of the Commission shall be appointed by the President from amongst such persons as appear to him to be suitably qualified, and the President shall appoint one of its members to be Chairman and another to be Vice Chairman. Further, Section 98 of the Act says, no member of the National Assembly, no councillor, no local government officer and no member of the Commission who has been removed from the office pursuant to Section 103 shall be appointed or continue as a member of the Commission. Nonetheless, Nandala stressed, once the functions of the Commission comes into play, one of the main issues to be properly addressed is the functionality of the Neighborhood Democratic Councils. The most important issue for the Local Government Commission is to ensure that central government removes its controlling tentacles over these local democratic organs and allow them to function as they actually are as independent, autonomous, elected bodies. Currently, they have been reduced to stooges of the central government. Yeah. Then Luziknan, Monrepo, NDC, I met with them only two weeks ago, and they said that all their projects are being stymied because they are, not get, they, they are required to submit a, um, proposals to the RDC of Region 4 controlled by the government and they are not getting permission to proceed with their project although they are not even asking the government for funding. But through Minister Bulkan and the RDC 
they are not being permitted to discharge the functions of their office and to deliver goods and services to the people of their constituency. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes Crinelius. The United Nations observed its 72nd anniversary on October 24, known as United Nations Day. It is on this suspicious day that the UN resident representative reminded the UN it is still on its mission to eliminate poverty. Nikhil Jondu files report. October 24 has been celebrated as the United Nations Day since 1948. In 1971, the UN General Assembly recommended that the day be observed by member states as a public holiday. President Roosevelt journeys to Yalta to meet with Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. They discuss the fate of Europe when Germany is defeated. Stalin promises to participate in the formation of a new world organization, the United Nations. During an exclusive interview with the United Nations resident coordinator, Mikiko Tanaka, she said at the global level, the organization has four major areas of activities, namely peace and security, sustainable development, humanitarian aid, and human rights. The UN coordinator noted that another aspect is the upholding of international laws. One of the important um, purposes of creation of the United Nations is to have a place where all the countries, um, and we have 193 member states, um, can um, work out differences uh, peacefully through discussion and also to agree on international laws and conventions that um, would be in common interest of the world. The United Nations has embarked on an ambitious plan to cut poverty rates in half, halting the spread of HIV and AIDS and providing universal primary education by 2015. That agenda was adopted in 2000. However, the UN resident coordinator said many of the goals are yet to be achieved. However, the General Assembly adopted another agenda in 2016 to continue the post-millennium development goals for a sustainable development by 2030. The new agenda calls on countries to begin efforts to achieve 17 sustainable development goals over the next 15 years. The UN resident coordinator stated there is some progress in the reduction of poverty, increased health status, and education among other areas. While there are many things that are similar to the MDGs as a continued effort like um, poverty, hunger, health, education, clean water, what we see now is a much more emphasis on environment because, of course, of the recognition of the world of the effects of uh, global warming, climate change, and that um, the world needs to continue or even um, do more in terms of mitigating the uh, gases that would, um, you know, aggravate this uh, global warming, and also to help countries that are very vulnerable to the effects of uh, climate change. In addition, the United Nations has placed governance as a key aspect to be achieved by 2030. She noted that governance goes into the sensitive areas of countries' governments, which is a breakthrough for the organization. And also what is very, very important when, it, when we talk about no poverty in 2030 is that we cannot leave anybody behind. So we really need to look into uh, the vulnerable groups, the people who are disadvantaged. Poverty is usually a, um, uh, you know, a very complex, uh, you know, phenomena. It does not characterize the person or the family or the community, but it's the conditions under which they're living which are very, very difficult. So in, in order to help people to go out of poverty, those solutions need to be very, very tailored. Mikhail John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead, stay tuned. Curtains, curtains, more curtains, a decor and gift gallery. Pick your curtains for your living room, kitchen, bedroom, or just add some colors to the curtains you already have to give that Christmassy look. 
Shop your Christmas curtains today from Decor and Gift Gallery. This is not an introduction. This is something that is a culmination of all the work that we've done, starting with really when GTT came together in 1991, really when we landed the, on the sea fiber optic cable. What we're doing now is running fiber to the homes, which is something that is seen in the largest cities in North America. This will change lives. And that really is what motivated us. Gafu has been Guyana's largest manufacturer of steel products since 1970, and we were the first to introduce Alu Zinc and pre-painted corrugated sheets, which are produced in several widths and gauges and can be cut to any desired length. They're available in ripple, non-ripple, clay tile, non-clay tile, and trapezoidal designs. We supplement our corrugated sheets with curved sheets and ridging in Alu Zinc and pre-painted finishes. Also galvanized deckings for casting concrete floors, manufactured in several thicknesses and can be cut to any length from 6 feet to 30 feet. Some of the other products produced by us are galvanized purlin in widths of 4, 6 and 8 inches and to lengths 6 feet to 40 feet. PRC fabric in sheets 6.35 mm, sizes 20 feet by 8 feet, suitable for heavy concrete flooring or areas of heavy traffic. At Gafu's, we produce the best quality at the most competitive prices and also offer the best services in the hardware business. All our steel products are available at any of our seven locations countrywide. Gafu's, the name you can trust. You're tuned to News Update. Welcome back. Of the 500 persons squatting from Sophia to Cummings Lodge, only a mere 25 from Afield Sophia have applied for house lots. This is according to Chief Executive Office of the Central Housing and Planning Authority, Lyndon Saul, when he paid a visit to the area earlier today. Here's more. The Chief Executive Office of the Central Housing and Planning Authority, Lyndon Saul, during a media visit through Sophia declared that there are only 23 squatters in Afield Sophia that have applied for lands. Saul said that persons are squatting around the Lamaha Conservancy, which is used for the residents of Georgetown. And you would notice that people are squatting in close proximity to the Lamaha Conservancy. And we get our drinking water um, from this very um, facility here. I just want you to look at it and you would recognize that there are persons squatting on the dam. Pit latrines, pit latrines are also in that close vicinity to there. The CEO mentioned over 500 persons are squatting from Sophia to Cummings Lodge will be removed as they are located in the zero tolerance zones. He further said that the squatting situation has been ongoing for some time. CHMP has been engaging these persons for the longest while. Uh, of course they are fully well aware that squatting is illegal and we have to bring an end to squatting. We cannot allow the situation to continue. And we will do that in a civilized manner. We will engage the persons. We, we are asking them to come in to apply for our slots. And we will work with them to remove them from the um, zero tolerance area. The minister within the Ministry of Communities, Valerie Adams Patterson Yearwood, told squatters in a meeting on October 23 that they must evacuate the government's reserves by January 2018. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The East Bank Damara pedestrian overpasses at Houston, Petersall, Eccles, Providence and Diamond are closer to becoming a reality. The works are rapidly moving apace and are on schedule for the November deadline. Earlier in the year, Minister Say Joseph Harmon had announced that a U.S. $364,000 contract was awarded for the pedestrian overpass at Diamond and a U.S. $1 million contract for those at Houston, Petersall and at Eccles. 
When completed, the pedestrian overpasses will not only eliminate congestion on the road, but will also keep pedestrians safe from fatal accidents. Minister of Natural Resources Rafael Trotman says Guyana, along with Suriname, is looking to build a joint oil facility to service both countries. Before that can be cast in stone, there will be a feasibility study to determine the location and size of the facility. The Minister of Natural Resources Rafael Trotman indicated that there have been discussions with Suriname for a joint industrial site to serve for both countries. Trotman stated that the government plans to make preparations for a feasibility study, which will determine the location and the size of the facility. Right. Well, this is something that uh, we, as I said, the discussion has renewed and resumed with Suriname to see whether the, that facility could service both countries. And we are hoping before the end of the year to either start and hopefully finish, but if not start, a feasibility study to see exactly where and what type of facility we are going to have. It is, um, without a doubt, that we are going to have a facility. It's a matter of the where and the, the, the design. The minister mentioned U.S. company Chevron has indicated its interest in participating in offshore activities in Guyana. He further said the company has placed an application for some acreage which will be taken to cabinet. Well, Chevron has put in a very good uh, application for some acreage. It is to be considered and I will be asking cabinet in, uh, in a few weeks, I suppose, um, for some guidance on that. But I would say it's a very good proposal and, and it shows that Chevron, which is a world-class uh, company, has very good interest, keen interest in coming into Guyana. With Guyana to begin commercial oil production in 2020, the minister said that the government is in support of the programs that have been created for Guyana's upcoming oil industry. The number of private um, institutions that have come up, we wish them well. Uh, government will not support any one in particular because we believe we shouldn't show favor um, where the private sector is concerned. But we are plugging with things, little things like scholarships and asking the companies themselves when they make, when they make applications to come into our country. We are very keen in, on their corporate social responsibility. What are they prepared to give back by way of training and scholarships for young people? Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Stay tuned for regional and international news as well as again a stock exchange. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like all you know the secret. Everybody, Everybody know the secret. <laughs> taste to the people by uncapping the real Guyanese flavor at the uncapped event October 27 to 29, 2017. See agro-processors unleash their full potential as they exhibit new technologies and innovations and uncapping of new products. Uncapped taste the real Guyanese flavor. At GTT, Pinktober is the month we celebrate the lives of those we love. Pinktober is a time we raise breast cancer awareness. And Pinktober is the moment we all come together to make a difference. During Pinktober, your $2,000 purchase at GTT gives you data, a ticket to see Chronix, Travis Green, or your favorite dance hall act, and $500 goes directly to the Guyana Cancer Foundation. Together, we can make a difference. Do more with GTT. 
Guyana's number one network. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Regional and international news taken from the BBC. Thousands of taxi drivers in the Colombian capital Bogota have blocked roads and clashed with police in protest at hail services such as Uber. Yellow cabs lined the streets of the city on Monday as drivers objected to what they said was an unfair advantage awarded to app-based services. The protesters are calling for more regulation on technology companies like Uber and Cabify who they said are not obligated to pay insurance. The strike caused a major disruption. Cab drivers blocked major intersections in the capital. As protesters began attacking those who refused to join the strike, police threw tear gas at the crowd to disperse them, Reuters news agency reports. However, authorities in Colombia have said that they are unable to prevent the startups like Uber and Cabify from operating in the city. Meanwhile, Ivory seizures around the world hit record levels last year, with elephant poaching in Africa declining for a fifth year in a row, a report says. About 40 tons of trafficked ivory was recovered, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, site reports says. While poaching killed 111,000 African elephants over the last decade, in most places it appears to be leveling off. Sites as welcome the news, but sounded a note of caution. The report said the record weight of seizures could be down to better awareness and law enforcement. It comes despite there being an increase in the amount of ivory being carved into bangles and pendants in Africa, rather than just being exported as tusks to Asia, which are easier to intercept. Quad free rooms, MTV, news update. This is what went down at the Judge and Magistrate's Courts. A 34-year-old Port Kaituma businessman was on Tuesday remanded to prison by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan for trafficking cannabis. Sheldon Solomon, a father of 10, denied that on October 22 at Waterfront Port Kaituma, he had 90 grams of cannabis in his possession for the purpose of trafficking. According to Police Prosecutor Arvin Moore on the day in question, acting on a tip-off that Solomon was selling narcotics, the police went to his business premises and conducted a search. It is alleged that Solomon ran to his backyard when he saw the police. A rank who gave chase reportedly saw the accused throw a black plastic bag into an old tire. 
The rank retrieved the parcel which contained a quantity of leaves, seeds and stems suspected to be cannabis. Prosecutor Moore objected to the businessman being granted his pre-trial liberty on the grounds of the seriousness and the prevalence of the charge. The magistrate remanded Solomon and transferred the matter to the Matthews Ridge Magistrates Court for November 8. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 744. Let's turn our attention to the Denmark Harbor Bridge schedule. That sums up our newscast for tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Former AG bashes President Granger over GCAM chairman appointment. Fitter calls for a removal of one-third tax threshold in persons earning over $180,000. Only 23A fields of five squatters applied for lands. And in court, the father of 10 remanded for trafficking narcotics. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Wednesday, October 25. On behalf of our news team, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching. Have a good night.